Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Vestax VCM600 controller with Bitwig Studio. Let's go! Welcome to Mathieu's Bitwig Tutorials. I'm your host Mathieu and in this video series I'm giving you tips and tricks so you can get better at using Bitwig Studio. Today's video is about my custom script for the VCM600 controller. It's available for free download on my GitHub. I will put the link in the description below. Big ups going to Alex from Bitwig for turning my needs into code because I cannot code myself. So this guy did all the work. Thanks again. But what might you ask is the VCM600? The VCM600 is a MIDI controller from Vestax. It was initially released in 2008 as an Ableton Live controller. It features a DJ mixer like layout with six channels, each of them with DJ EQ, mute, solo, pan, two FX sense, filter cutoff, and frequency. A cross fader, clip launching abilities, tempo control, and a macro section are also available. Unfortunately, Vestax went bankrupt end of 2014, so there has never been any script uh, for Bitwig Studio at this point. But now there is. And even though the company went bankrupt, there are still some units in the shops and uh, it's about 200 euros now and it used to be 600 when, when it was first released. You know, you can have them for really cheap and it's really solid. They have basically a mixer, you can use it for the studio, for live, uh, it's pretty decent. So you will have to get two files from my GitHub. The first file is the script itself, it's the extension file, this one. So you just click on it and then you can download it. And then you take the template project. You could as well take the, the channel strip preset, but it's it's in the template here. So you basically you, ch you take just those two guys. The extension file, you put it in your extension folder it's within your bitwig studio folder in mac it's in the in the documents if you didn't change it that's basically where your library uh, and all your presets are then you have an extension folder whether you're on on windows or on linux or on mac everybody has it so you just toss the the bitwig extension file in there and that's actually enough. Then you should plug your VCM600. So you do double click on the project and then uh, it's going to open uh, Bitwig. And if everything is fine, this is this project. If everything is fine, then um, it will find the controller, which is here, VCM600. It should auto detect it. So now let's talk about the way it's mapped. Uh, first off, um, the six tracks are hard mapped to the the first six tracks of your project. Means that if you add some stuff after the six, it won't be it won't be seen by the by the controller. Uh, we did this because I used this controller with Ableton Live. The problem was that if you have some group tracks, you open the group in order to tweak something and you forget to close it and you, you get on the controller before closing the group, then the content of the group becomes another available track for the, uh, for the tracks here. So let's say if you have, you have your, your six group and uh, you open group one, uh, that contains two tracks, then it, it will move everything two tracks from the right as long as the group is open. See? So uh, it's a source of confusion. This is definitely something you don't want to happen live. So with Alex, we decided to, to make it like this, that only the six first track of the project are available to control on the controller, meaning that you should keep those six track as buses where you route everything else. The second thing is um, in order for uh, the um, DJ EQ and the filter to work, 
you need to have the device on your channel. So uh, there is a device already on this template. You should right away right click on it and save preset to library so you can access this preset from any other project. Uh, that said, um, this is just an FX layer with an DJ EQ and the filter inside. Um, and everything is mapped to uh, those knobs here. So when you press on the kill switch here, when the light is on on the, on the controller, it means it's not killing anything. And here the, the highs are killed, but here it's highlighted on the, on the software. So it's a bit confusing, but if you get used to it, end of the story then you have for every band you have the level of the high the mids and the lows then you have your filter cut off and you have your resonance here these are mapped to the position of those remote controls it means that you cannot change uh, the position of them here whatever you put on this position here as a remote control is going to be controlled by the cutoff knob, the frequency knob on the on the controller. Note that you can always uh, map something manually and then override uh, the the auto mapped uh, stuff in the script. Yeah. So if I say uh, okay, I want to use the the frequency knob to control the pan on the track. So map to control key and then boom, and then it stops controlling the cutoff here. Yeah clear controller and assignment and then you're back on the on the default assignment uh, you will notice that most of the controls are doing the same thing uh, as label on the controller uh, so we're talking about yeah again the the dj eq the the filter the volume you can launch clips um if you move the scene to the the right place and then you there is a clip then you press play it will st start the clip you press stop it's gonna stop the clip like it was in Ableton you can uh, track select with this track button and you can focus on the uh, on the content of the of the track let me put um, some audio in the clip like this sample here whatever so yeah, if you press some clip, then you cycle between device view, content view, and then the automation view. So yeah, w most of the controls are doing just what's written on the on the device itself. But um, I needed three sends and returns. So uh, the pan on every track is actually a send A then send A becomes send B and send B becomes send C. For the return tracks, we have then those here ret return A, B as labeled, but we use this master level as the return level for the um, FX return C. So we still needed a master level, so that's this tempo uh, fader doing the job here. I have no use for a tempo fader anyway. This tempo nudge thing here uh, will increment, decrement your tempo uh, by uh, point 0.2 steps, like 0 0.20. So if you press five times, it's one BPM up or down. The macro section is auto mapped to the selected track and whatever primary device is on it. And, and so it will control the remote controls. You can select the, uh, the tracks on the go. We saw this with this here, with this guy. You also can um, select the effect tracks. This is effect. A, B, C, and master. And whatever is selected at the moment, then you have the controls here. So this is the size of my reverb because I have a reverb on the, on the first. So those buttons will let you 
uh, scroll between the three first per perform pages uh, on your on your device. So this is the page one. This is page two, which has no controls yet. Page three. I mean, you see the numbers here. So you can scroll between three pages. I think three perform pages are enough. This fourth guy here is free to assign or we forgot to use it or whatever, but uh, I guess it's free to assign. That's the, the way to see it. Uh, we have tap tempo here. So that was tempo 352 and 94. So you can tap your tempo. The cross fader, you have to assign it to A or B, you know, so you can have, you see it moving here. And uh, yeah, there is an, a button on every, on each track that is called cross fader assign and it's not implemented. So you have an extra button you can use to turn stuff on and off on every track. And uh, this pan, knob here over the former master channel that is now our FX return C is also free to assign. If you want to launch a scene you press, I mean you move uh, first to the scene you want to you wanna launch and then you press, I will mute this because I'm afraid of what's coming out, and then you press on it and then every clip on this row is going to be launched. Even the ones that are further away from the sixth track. So if you have more tracks, and you have clips on it, of course, when you launch the scene, those guys get launched too. So that's it, that was the very first VCM600 script for Bitwig Studio. How do you like it? Tell us in the comments. Make sure to hit subscribe uh, somewhere on this page so you can get more of those videos in the future. Uh, also click on that bell symbol so you get notified when a new video is out. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.